Okay, let's debunk some crap that Michio Kaku has said about quantum computing. Instead of computing on transistors, we're computing on atoms. Think about that. This is the ultimate computer. No longer computing on transistors, computing on atoms. This is the ultimate computer. You can't do better than that. Oh, really? Do you really think it is the ultimate one? Or are you using the word ultimate for a feel-good factor? This is also said by you. I think that the step beyond quantum computing is nuclear computing. Make up your mind. The CIA is worried that quantum computers will break right through the CIA and any, any kind of a barrier being placed around your secrets. These quantum computers can crack any known digital code. Oh. So this means the crown jewels, the crown jewels of any nation, with all their top secrets about the military and defense posture, all of that can be broken into by an advanced quantum computer. This man is making errors that I don't even expect from a goddamn freshman. Post-quantum cryptography, or PQC, is a whole field to protect our secrets from quantum computers. It includes approaches like lattice-based cryptography, hash-based cryptography, and four more. Even in his terrible book, he mentions these approaches vaguely. He also writes in his book, Quantum Supremacy, that a classical computer can factorize the integer n in a time which is exponential of n. That's a kindergarten-level mistake, because this is the case when the integer has n digits. Also, Michio, have you ever heard of general number field civ? It is a much more efficient classical algorithm with complexity for factoring an integer n given as this. We have known this for decades. We get thousands, hundreds of different kinds of petri dishes, put the drug in, put the tissue in, and just cross your fingers and hope and pray that of these thousands of dishes, one of them will create a super wonder drug. Now, think of putting that in the memory of a supercomputer, a quantum computer. It, uh, it analyzes whether or not germs can be destroyed by this substance at the speed of light. Not just one dish, but hundreds, thousands of dishes of these things can be tested at the same time in the memory, the memory of a computer. It can spin up or spin down. This is one, this is zero. And that's how electricity can be used to calculate zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Now, let that spinning type spin in all directions simultaneously. So not just up or down. Not just up or down, but in between simultaneously with all positions. How much more powerful is that than an ordinary digital computer? An infinitely more powerful paradigm shift. Infinitely more? Are you drunk? You are definitely drunk. I was wrong. He isn't making mistakes like a kindergarten child, but like a toddler. This misconception is such a basic one that I put this as the subheading of my blog. Also, quantum computers are actually less powerful than an exponentially parallel classical computer because they give us a single random outcome. He also writes how Google's Sycamore solved a problem in 200 seconds that will take the fastest supercomputer almost 10,000 years to solve. This claim was falsified by this IBM group paper, which claims to compute the same thing in almost 2.5 days. So what lesson do we get from today? Michio Kaku is out of control. Shut up, you are way worse. 